last week we talked to you about integrated pest management or pest control practices in a hobby type greenhouse. In our first series we talked about cultural or sanitation practices. Well today we're going to bring you part two of this series and talk to you about mechanical controls of the integrated pest management process. And as a reminder, integrated pest management is really just a series of pest control practices that includes many different types of ways to control pests. And it does include chemicals, but it usually uh, relies on them as a last resort, hoping that all the other things that we're going to talk to you about first will take care of the pest. And again, today we're going to talk about mechanical type practices. And we're going to go through a series of these, and again, really a hobby type greenhouse is the best way to use or practice some of these. Now the first thing that you can do really is just based on exclusion. And I've got some mesh or, or some wire screen that almost feels like cloth, but it is wire. And this is something that you really wouldn't use to protect individual plants in a greenhouse, but it would be something that you would put on the outside maybe of fans or to help cover your doors or use as screens because that's really where most of the insects are coming in through fans or the doors. Now obviously as you introduce plants into the greenhouse you can bring insects in as well. So just using this as a protective covering, a lot of times the fans will actually suck the insects in. So it's something you want to do maybe as a little extra precaution on the outside of any entrance point to the greenhouse. Now another very simple thing, and, and anytime you're talking about integrated pest management, you have to remember that you need to be active in the greenhouse, checking the plants on a daily basis. And this is an asparagus fern where we've identified some aphids here on the outside. Now on a plant like this, if we just initially found it, one simple thing that we could do, because the aphids are only on one part, is do nothing more than just cut that tip off and dispose of it and we've, we've gotten rid of the insect problem. So just hand picking or removing different leaves. Now obviously you can't pick off all the aphids but that's why cutting off branches or removing leaves or if this one plant was so severely infested you could remove the entire plant. So again just hand picking is a very simple thing to do but you've got to be out active in the greenhouse and monitoring it on a regular basis. Now another thing, uh, especially on a small type greenhouse, many of you might have little mister bottles like this. You can adjust the pressure where it's pretty strong and if you find a few of the aphids on the end or some of the different insects, you can actually wash them off, especially spider mites. That's one of the easiest controls. Now you need to get underneath the foliage and sometimes if you turn a plant up, you're going to knock out the soil. So you may want to use some masking tape or p newspaper around the the bottom so you don't lose the soil where you can turn it upside down, submerge it, or use any kind of a pressure spray to wash off the foliage and hopefully reduce the population of the insect. So just high water pressure. And back in the summer you saw us using a vacuum, kind of like a dust vacuum, out in our vegetable garden to remove insects. Well now there's a, a new uh, vacuum really that's a handheld that's called Houdini that is really developed for vacuuming off insects. And inside here is a, a cartridge that you can pull out that actually catches the insects when they are sucked into the, the vacuum. So it's got an extension where you can reach into those hard to reach places with uh, the benches. But the thing to remember is aphids or scales are things that are really stuck, maybe like uh, mealybugs. It probably won't work, but white flies, some of the spider mites, it has enough pressure that you'll actually be able to suck those up and keep that cleaned out. And I think you're going to see a lot more of these products showing up on the market because, again, it's a very environmentally safe way to control pests. Now, a lot of times we are familiar with sticky traps and, and barriers. And really in a greenhouse situation, this is a great way to monitor pests, even in the vegetable garden too. And what we've done, it, it's found that insects prefer yellow colors. And here we've just got some yellow plastic plates that we've dipped in a sticky barrier. Some people will spray like a vegetable cooking oil or even dip it in a motor oil uh, just to give it a sticky barrier. And then when the insects land on it, 
Um, as you can see here, we've got one that could be hung up. You'll actually catch the insects on there. Now these are loaded with white flies, but it really it won't control all of the insects, but it's a great way to monitor them and to find out what's going on in the greenhouse. And the one here in the poinsettia, which is a very timely plant, poinsettias are known for white flies, and this particular one was mounted in the plant and is just covered with them. So it will help control them, but really it's not 100%, and it's better to monitor and identify the insects that are showing up in the greenhouse. Now, Tanglefoot is a product that is used to, to paint and stick on some of these things. Uh, it's, it's been around for years and it's just a sticky, gooey product. You can get it where it's thick like this or a paint on or a spray type. So look for those types of products. Again, they're real good for monitoring. And then, you know, we've talked about attractants, uh, which are pheromones that are sexual um, attractants that attract insects. A lot of these are being developed now for greenhouses and work quite well too. Uh, so you might want to keep your eyes open for that. And then let me move down here to the end and show you some other things that we think of probably more as pesticides or, or that type of product, but the reason they're included in a mechanical talk is because of the way that they work. And we're all familiar with our soap products that are used, like Safer Soap and then some of the dishwashing detergents. They're really nothing more than uh, just a soapy product that smothers or puts a barrier on the leaf and a lot of times we think of those being used with oils. And that's what I've got in here is just a, a petroleum distilled product that is an oil. And this particular one is used often in greenhouses but can be used in a garden uh, setting too. And again, you're putting a protective barrier on the leaf and, and it's why it's a mechanical control. But the thing you need to remember when using oils or soaps, even though they're considered organic type practices, you need to make sure you wear protective clothing, such as the dust mask and a face shield or goggles and, and the gloves. And the reason for that is because it can still get in your eyes, splash, those types of things. And use a test plant anytime you're using these products because you may burn the product if it's not um, labeled for sure. If it just says house plants and you're not sure which ones to use it on, make sure you use just one leaf or, or one plant if you've got several to see what kind of reaction you're going to get. But always follow the directions. Lastly, I want to talk to you about diatomaceous earth, which is really just um, skeletal remains of fossil diatoms. And it's put in a powder formulation. And the way that works is, once you put it on the plant, the insects crawl over it and the soft body ones like aphids, it will scratch their body and they'll actually dehydrate. But it's got sharp edges, kind of like broken up glass, but it's made in a powder formulation. So you need some kind of a product. And here we've just got a duster. You can get dusters or foggers that it needs to put on the plant because if you sprinkle it on, you don't get good coverage. But you definitely need to wear a dust mask because these particles can be inhaled and actually hurt your intestines, et cetera, et cetera. So diatomaceous earth, again, is a pesticide type product, but it has a mechanical type control effect. Now a dust mask could be used with that and some of the oils because of the particle size, but anytime you're spraying other pesticides, don't forget a respirator really is the key to safety. Now again, these are all mechanical type ways, again, because of their protection or barrier type aspects. And next week, we're going to visit with you about some of the biological controls, and we hope you'll join us then. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. You can also find more recent videos on our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.